Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Synod Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. And in the meanwhile, the Lord has sent to us his comforter, the Holy Spirit, to hold us fast in faith and right doctrine. And as our comforter, he gives us peace and hope in the midst of the trials of life. So, dear friends, St. Peter's epistle tells us how Christians ought to live in the midst of suffering. Love one another. Your suffering is no excuse to withhold love and forgiveness of others. Instead, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. The service will begin after this opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in Ezekiel 36, 22 through 28. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in 1 Peter 4, 1 through 7. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel is according to St. John chapters 15 and 16. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God, and they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from St. John's 15th and 16th chapters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woe to you, for the hour is coming and is now here, when you will be thrown out of the synagogues. Woe to you, for they will mock and belittle your faith, thinking that they are doing a great service for God. Christians daily die for their beliefs, killed by those thinking that they are serving God. So many people have given themselves over to false and innovative doctrines. They teach that faith is a purely personal undertaking, complete with its own personal truth. They tell us that we have a mandate to celebrate degeneracy and perversity in the name of inclusive love. We are told that the teachings of Scripture are too hard, too restrictive, and too unloving. Apparently, according to the so-called wisdom of our age, God stands against his own revealing of himself in his word. What he gave us as the truth some centuries ago apparently has passed away in the name of some higher law that just happens to match the prevailing whims of our culture. And more, we are told that Christians never suffer, never die, and are never to be trod upon by this sinful world. Suffering. Suffering. The, world, the word brings up all kinds of feelings and memories for people, usually bad ones at that. Suffering is, well, suffering. It certainly isn't enjoyable. Indeed, many of us would go to great lengths to avoid suffering. Mostly, such avoidance is understandable and small. We don't roll around in broken glass or picnic on wasps' nests. 
We don't try to get sunburned or eaten up by mosquitoes. We certainly don't only eat unpleasant foods, no matter how good for us they might be. Avoiding suffering, suffering is something that we all partake in from time to time, as need arises and so forth. But what about unavoidable suffering? The things that just happen seemingly without reason or cause that leave people, even loved ones, in misery. Such things, of course, are tragic. No one wants to see mom or dad or son or daughter or friend or grandparent or cousin or neighbor get stricken with cancer or heart disease. We all feel for people who are maimed or crippled in unfortunate accidents, do we not? Suffering is a hard thing to take. Unfortunately, sometimes it is unavoidable. There are those who would posit a solution to such suffering. When medicine, therapy, and hospitals fail, they argue that people should have the right to take their own lives. These people dress up the topic with euphemisms, such as dignity with, uh, death with dignity or compassion and choices. But suicide is still suicide even when done with the oversight of physician. Physician-assisted suicide is a terrible plague that infects certain parts of our society. Instead of treating the ill and suffering with dignity and serving them to alleviate their pain and discomfort, we have segments of our society arguing that they should simply be done away with. How horrible is this? There is no human being so worthless as to deserve suicide or murder. Dear friends, if you know someone who is suffering, it is your Christian obligation to do what you are able to serve them in their suffering. I know it can be hard. I know it can be a drain, but it is the right thing to do. Our Lord Jesus loved even the ill and suffering enough to die for them. Should we not also love and care for them in our own way? Dear friends in Christ, suffering is not the real enemy here. No human being is so worthless as to need death as an option to end their suffering. We do not condone murder. We do not condone self-murder, which is what suicide really is. The real sin here is despair. Despair of one's own life given to them by God. Despair of Christ's own salvation. This is a hard fact to take, but suffering is not the worst thing in the world. Death is. Suffering being the result both of our own sins and the condition of this sinful age is not permanent nor is it absolute. Even more, it allows us to share in the sufferings of Christ. Did he who knew no sin not become sin for us? Did he not pay the debt of our sins on the cross? Did he not die in our place? When we suffer the ill effects of sin, we suffer as he did. Even more than this, we must remember that when we suffer for Christ, for our confession of his gospel, we are truly blessed. Even when the world assaults and assails us, we are blessed. When neighbors and friends and family think us strange or detached or bigoted or foolish, we are blessed. When we are mocked and belittled, we are blessed. When Facebook or Twitter censor Christian messages due to their offensive content, we are blessed. This may seem far removed from us here in North Dakota. After all, we're not killed for going to church as people are in parts of India, Africa, and the Middle East. We are not tortured for confessing our Lord Jesus. We do not have to fear bombs or terrorist attacks against us in our congregations. But even here, we do not fit well with an unbelieving world. Christians are sued for working and running their businesses according to the teachings of our faith. Our views on human sin and life are routinely mocked in the media and the academy. Take heart. This is a sign that the church has not been forgotten by God. Indeed, we are blessed for it. Why is this the case? We who are sinners in this age suffer. Some of our suffering is the result of our own actions. Other suffering is the result of the sinful age we live in. All of it we deserve. Indeed, the only reason we do not have more suffering and hardship is due to the great mercy of God. If we were to be repaid in kind for all our evil, we would lack even the most basic of necessities that God grants so freely to us each day. We are not only blessed by God's continued providence, His abundant blessings, but we are blessed even more by the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Further still, our suffering for our confession of Christ is a sign that the Holy Spirit has claimed us as his own. After all, what sane person would endure mockery and scorn for no reason? What other reason could there be for centuries of Christians suffering and dying just as their Lord did for their faith? The world, false religion, and heretical sects offer us all sorts of things, purity of morality, purity of method, purity of righteousness, purity of fellowship, but each of these is a lie. 
We cannot, through our feeble efforts, bring purity in any of these spheres, no matter how diligently we might try for it. Instead, we receive as a gift the perfection and righteousness of Christ. It is not our own. It is alien to us. Yet in Christ, it is ours nonetheless. We possess it as surely and completely as if it were the very bodies we have been given from God. Christ grants freely and lavishly his love and forgiveness through his holy word and the blessed sacraments. Let us receive them always with joyful hearts, holding fast to the promises of the gospel and faith. Those who are mocked and despised by the world for their Christian faith will rejoice when Christ returns in his glory. Those who are insulted and belittled will celebrate Christ's final return. Those who are robbed of food, drink, home, family, vocation, or life will rejoice for eternity. When we suffer for the sake of Christ, we are being tested, refined by God's own hand. And for what end? So that we might hold even tighter to Christ our Lord and his mercy and grace, so that we might enjoy the fullness of joy that will come to us in the life of the world to come. And in the meanwhile, the Lord has sent to us his comforter, the Holy Spirit, to hold us fast in faith and right doctrine. And as our comforter, he gives us peace and hope in the midst of the trials of life. So, dear friends, St. Peter's epistle tells us how Christians ought to live in the midst of suffering. Love one another. Your suffering is no excuse to withhold love and forgiveness of others. Instead, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Further, be self-controlled and sober-minded. Christians do not use the excuse of suffering to indulge in the sinful appetites of the flesh. Gluttony is still gluttony. Drunkenness is still drunkenness. Hatred is still hatred. Indulgent and selfish spending is still indulgent and selfish. Be sober-minded and in control. Christians, do not let the sinful flesh lead you astray with the seductive whispers that a little bit of selfishness will soothe the pain of your suffering. Instead, it at best masks it for a time. Most of the time it compounds suffering with suffering and sin with sin. Live in your offices and vocations well. Being defrauded, having a bad day, or suffering illness is not an excuse to not do your job, not care for your family, or otherwise fail at being a responsible citizen. So, dear friends, rest in the care of the Comforter. Cling to the death of Christ, the only avenue through the suffering of this age of sin. Bear witness about Christ, even when that witness is torture and suffering. What you give up in suffering for the faith will be rewarded with the crown of righteousness and immortality. When suffering does come upon you, and it will, rejoice that this sinful world has marked you as a follower of Christ. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in the Oaks area, please join us at St. John's Lutheran Church, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you, and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today, and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.